and again, probably all read this in the uh, room note, but um, <clears throat> I'll be basically just sharing my thinking, what I'm doing, what I'm looking at, <clears throat> and this is, as the room sign says, this is uh, based on my idea that simply observing what's going on and responding to the most basic things is really, that's good enough for a pretty darn strong uh, play. Okay, uh, and we'll probably be doing some undos for anything that um, hurts the game too much, anything that's too slow or um, too easy to attack or something like that. And we'll see how it progresses. Okay, Flynn 1, you're moved. Okay. Just got to mention this. If he had started here, I would have said, I see a gap at A. So I think I'll play here getting ready to hit that open spot. I would have noticed that right away. He plays here. There's no particular openings. Uh, and I'll just choose this. Okay. Um, I could play e17 and make the game interesting and the board cut apart, but I'm going to play, uh, I don't want d4, it's a little too straightforward, so I'm going to play e3, q16 was, uh -huh. Two unfinished corners. He plays one, I play the other. And I'm just playing low so I don't have the same Giuseppe. That's just the style. So everything so far is style. There's two things I'm looking for for black now. Black can pinch in an effort to, de to develop the top in Sente or black can choose a Jiseki to develop the left. So black can develop either one. Um, it's hard to say which one's better. Uh, they both look natural and positive. Since there's Jiseki going on in the bottom left, maybe he would choose one and I would choose the other and he wouldn't be able to produce it. Okay, black did not pinch me. Okay, that gives me an opportunity. So I'm thinking to myself, what's this mean? Uh, we both want area one. For black, it's a double wing. For me, it's a pleasant extension. Um, secondly, I could simply play at A and settle my group immediately, which also hurts his K16 stone. It, um, hits the open skirt. And of course I like playing around B. I already know he can develop the left and if I choose the first Jiseki on the left it stops him from developing it naturally and puts me in charge. So three ideas. When he pinches me on top, any pinch on top makes his K16 look well, let's just, uh, this is exactly what's going through my mind, right? So I pass in my head, and he pinches. In my head, I'm thinking, Tawari, black to play. Oh, black to play is K16. What? Why would play black play K16? That's silly. See what I'm saying? So I don't mind his pinch. It creates a bad shape. How about a move like C14... Um, so mythical saying, what about, am I thinking about a uh, pinch like this? I'm not, because let's do Tawari again, black to play. Black's going to play some move like this, 
and now he's ready to bother my left side or the top. Well, what if I give him a free move at K16, and then he uses the top? Oh, that puts him ahead. He's a move ahead in this whole sequence. I don't want him to be a move ahead in this whole sequence. So no, I wouldn't want to create a new weak group there. There's settle at A or don't play there at all. <clears throat> Next, if he chose to develop the um, left side, let's do a for instance. Let's just do something real simple here. Just a for instance. See this left side getting real nice? If we now add, get back to the board. His his ability to affect the left here is now increased. He's a move ahead on the left. So if I play the passive right side, he can now go whole hog on this side. He can do whatever he wants, and he's even more prepared. So in my head, the left is the most active. And since I don't care if he pinches me, I'll choose a Jaseki that affects him strongly, yet is further into that area. Back to him. I could simply play uh, C9 and just live comfortably in that big area, but it's not things aren't scary yet, so I can uh, do some pressure as I am playing in that area. D15 is a local Jaseki. I don't mind him using another move there, so. No. It certainly isn't regular. K16 is not regular. But it's big on top, produces the next big on the right, produces the left side even bigger. No, it's a very interesting move. Well, I forgot I can do um, quiet mode if I want. Well, there's not a lot of comments yet. These are all reasonable. And I find myself over the minute. If black's still pinchered, how would you respond? Uh, that's actually a good question. And it's a regular pattern. So let's take a look. <clears throat> let's say black pinches. When white runs out, black has two weaknesses. Each stone, a coffee, each stone that's a single black stone versus two white. So white's going to settle either by attacking one or the other. But if black already has this move in, then black defends, I've got no way to settle. Both sides are strong. So with this position, when he pinches, I no longer want out because it's become difficult. So instead, I force him to take it. I get a steady group, negating his wall, and now I can live in the corner if I want. That would be bad for him, so he takes. All of a sudden, he's over-concentrated on top. Mm, K16 no longer looks good. He wouldn't play K16 next. So that's the pattern. If it becomes difficult to run out, then you give up the stone, and it tends to be uh, slow for him to take it. Okay, so I went here. Nope, I went here. So all the things we've looked at, some of you might say, oh, that's complicated, or that's a lot to think about. Well, these are all based on one and two move readouts and character. One and two moves reading out is not such a big deal, as long as you see the imposition and make a judgment on it. Um, any readout, I mean, if you read out 40 moves, 
and you go, I killed him, that's its own conclusion. But if you read out 40 moves and then see the board in your head and make positional judgment, that's where it gets difficult. So just read one or two moves and get a positional judgment. Then we're doing, then that's all, then that's uh, good. That's, that's all you really need. Um, I'm going this way. He's made a mistake in Joseki, or it's a very unusual Joseki. It's not considered Joseki, because his next move, he can't settle. So E3 would have worked. Uh, a lot of other things would work. And we'll look at those in a review, I think. So he has no next move to settle, so he's going to have to, you know, uh, just run out, which is kind of passive or something unspectacular. So his next move is bound to be a little slow. And if he doesn't defend, then I have a weak group to attack, and I'm happy then, too. He did not threaten the bottom area. He put some pressure on my single stone. That's fine. Um, I don't feel really bothered by this. I think perhaps it's a good time to play this. So this is a pinch to his cornerstone. Now granted it's a light pinch, but it's also a light relationship with my d8, which he just put some pressure, added pressure on. He pressured me lightly. I responded lightly. Well, this whole balance is looking good for white. So up to here, we start getting the feeling, you know, white's gained a little bit. What's that equate, equate to in points? Uh, point, two points, possibly three. It's a small gain. And black's group looks a little heavy in the bottom left. So that kind of suggests closer to three, possibly four, because black's not exactly, uh, but then white's a little weak in the bottom left, so I'm back to two, possibly three. It's very um, subtle and unimportant. But white is a bit happy. Black, of course, will want to defend his stone because if he doesn't, my next move means I pinched and I have health. That means I pinched him, he ignored, I got myself health, so it's even more difficult to defend. Now when I come out, I'm the one who's more ready. So I will Oh yeah, maybe um, now and then there's lag, and the lag causes the voice to do funny things. So when he plays here, I start doing reading. And I'm thinking, uh, A, but that feels like it's easy on black, right? Black can, it doesn't pressure black very much. And the wall I'm creating on the right is already negated, so I don't like it. Does that make sense? Not much pressure on the left. It's already negated on the right, so I don't want the straightforward wall. Then I move it over to B. Okay, now I'm putting pressure on the group. True, the black will still live, and I'm still left a wall with a cut in it. I really like that. Uh, then I start thinking of C. True, but it's my E17 stone that's been hurt. 
So I want my E17 stone to get healthy, but none of these walls are working for me. So I switch all together, and I go over to the DE idea. Well, if I live locally, then I'm hurting him while I live. That sounds better to me. D or D, corner first. Get rid of his life. Yeah. So I'll settle on E. Now, if I look at those last two options, D and E, and I'm still dissatisfied, then I'd switch over to here. I'd play a forcing move. And then I'd go back to reassessing all those things. And if all those things still didn't sound good, then I would simply get out. But these do sound good, so I'll play them. The right side? There's nothing on the right side. I don't have a weakness. He doesn't have a weakness. Left. Yeah, nice and light. He's weaker there than I am at this point. No problem. The other side, I don't know why I looked at the right. Yeah, he's too busy uh, dealing with the stone to think about attacking. Not just that, but his bottom left group really doesn't have any uh, eyes. It doesn't have the right to attack either. So I'm feeling pretty good on the left. So the things I'm hoping that you're catching <coughs> is how I keep looking at character, character, character. Which direction will make my stones work better? Um, can I follow the basic rules? Who's weaker? All these kind of things. Uh, what kind of future do I want? Like, a, like my E17 stone, the simple one-point jump, which most key players would play. I'll just get out. Yeah, but on the right side, it's already negated. That simple character gets, you, gets us to change the move. So I'm going to live. He's weak there, right? But he can G18, get, getting a lot stronger in Sente. I can't let him turn. It's too uh, affects me too much in Sente. His turn still bothers me at H18. If he turns, yeah, I'm going to live, but it's a bother. I don't want him to bother me. So I'm going to keep going until I feel very comfortable with his turn. Okay, now if he turns a J18, doesn't bother me at all. Absolute gote. So I'm no longer concerned about that group. <clears throat> so now where? I used to feel pretty darn good on the left, but now he's got a massive wall, very strong, thick wall. I'm immediately concerned with what that wall's going to do. So I will now defend the left side. Let's look at the different ways. I don't even consider A. That helps my left side, but I'm playing close to his thickness. No, thank you. I could jump up at B. That appears to be a pretty uh, natural move, jumping up. Yet again, if let's cut the B stone in half. Let me put it right down so we can see this a little better. Let's cut these two white stones, E12, C12, right down the 12 line. Okay, we take a little hacksaw or bus on right down the middle. The bottom half of those stones look really good. They're working with D8 very nicely. They're developing the territory there very nicely. But if we look at the top half of the stones, they're really bad. They're right next to this black wall doing nothing, not attacking the wall. They're doing nothing on the top, but they're doing a lot on the bottom. So I'm only half, a little, more, little over half glad with this move. I want to be doing more than this. Now when I say that, I always double check my math. Now it's not math, it's just ideas, but I just say math. Now look at this move. And I go, oh, that's a good move for black. That's really developing the center really well. Ah, so my white stone isn't doing a lot. 
other than it's negating great things black can do. Okay, so it's not so good for white, but it's great for black. So I wouldn't play here for my own sake, but I would, now I'm interested in playing here to negate black's idea. See what I'm saying? So my character, not so great. His character, great. Next, what I prefer to do is this move. Totally defends me, totally attacks him. That really hurts black. Takes his eyes, gives me a base, the only question is, does he have time for this move? This is a pretty nice move. Looks like Sente. Did I hurt him enough to get that, I'm happy he got this help, this good move in? Nah, I don't want him to have this good move in. This is too good. That's my impression, is that his wall gets too useful. So I'm going to negate his wall as my primary idea. Now remember, this doesn't mean this is the best move. You know, just any old nine down walks in the room and says, wow, this guy's an idiot. What's he doing playing here? He should be playing on the right side. I mean, what we're talking about here has nothing to do with right and wrong, but rather how, to, how do stronger players tend to think. And for me, it's all about character because I hate reading. Now, I'm totally aiming for C6. It really completes my group and bothers him. i also looking forward to defending my E2 group. It's a little thing that's not necessarily out. It's going to live, but it might become unhappy if I'm not careful. So those are the, the right is also big. But uh, those other two ideas, to me, would come first. Well, hard to say. There's a principle that in the early opening, big moves, like the right, come before others, because they're so big in the early opening. So there's a couple competing principles here. But black's next move will tell me. Uh, Flynn wants asking for a little, you know, how should he be thinking here? And there's just the two thoughts. You definitely want to defend. You, you would like defending the A group, no doubt about that. Yet you would also love to play in the big area of B. So that's the question. Which one's more important? Uh, someone's suggesting maybe you could hurt C helping A and Sente get a little help for free, then go to the big move. That would be great. You could do both. But those are the ideas. You might be thinking, if he takes my A group, I still get out pretty easy. Oh, Uber dude, good to see you. Um, you played a tournament somewhat recently, and I think you did well. Uh, I don't remember the name of the tournament. <clears throat> but one game you played, I was really impressed with. You might remember it because uh, he got a little greedy on top of the board, and that allowed you to get a big uh, game. That's about all I can do to remind you of it right now. Anyway, I used that game in a lecture and didn't ask you. So... Sorry. I don't, even, I don't even remember. I took out all the names so no one would say, oh, this is Uber Dude's game because I hadn't asked you. So I made it anonymous. But um, So when he plays here, of course, the first thing I'm asking myself is, you know, how much is my... I hate one thing that I hate out. How much is this getting my A group in trouble? At this point, if I defend, or is it some tournament game now? If I defend the A group, it won't be... How do I say that? 
This is, to me, important. Okay, let's take play the big one. If I defend my group, it's doing two things. Health, that's good. Hurts black, black can, all, can no longer run in this direction like he just did. And develops the bottom. This is three purpose move. This is very nice. But if I defend it now, look here, this is not developing the bottom. This is a finished third line group. Also, it doesn't hurt black. So if he can't kill me, it, he better have some powerful thing in store because uh, I don't plan, as long as I can live, I don't want to play here anymore. It's down to a one purpose move and that purpose seems to be life. I think I already have life. So I'm not planning on, I'm not double checking my math here, but I don't see it as a problem. Okay. Uh, also, C6 is smaller now because C6 used to hurt black. Well, now it hurts black less, so it has less value. So now, should I play C6 or the right? The right, C6 is smaller, it makes the right bigger. Now, give me some feedback. Are you understanding this, what I'm saying about how B is now smaller because it doesn't hurt black so much? Does that make sense? This is a really important concept. Um, happens all the time when you have a move in, in, in your mind and it becomes smaller and smaller because of things. Are there any moves that are sente in the lower left? Uh, not of value. For instance, C sente, big deal. Well, I'm going to cut him. He defends at B, it was a bad idea. So no, not any moves that are helpful. Okay. Next question, third or fourth line. A lot of times if I want to play on the right, I might keep it to C, because I'm playing on the right, but I like focusing on the bottom. Maybe if I had um, attacked black with my F4, so the bottom was bigger, I might focus on the bottom with the C move. But on this board, the bottom is really uninteresting for me, so I want to carry it up um, to the rest of the board. And I don't like the idea of playing here, because look at this white stone. It's really, it's still behind enemy lines. This, this white group won't develop anything. It looks weaker than usual. Uh, yeah, I want to respect that wall. So I'm back to A or B. How do you decide that A group is not going to die or get hassled? Uh-huh, great question. Um, I mentioned... that my A group, as long as I'm not going to die, I don't plan on responding. Uh, Kadzer just brought up, well, what if he's going to hassle you? Well, at this point, I'm either going to live or I'm going to die. So, it's like, now I live, right? So he hassled me by getting that move in. Okay. Yeah, there's a, it's kind of like hassling, no, I'm either going to live or die, so hassling is no longer an issue. Hassling is like an ongoing, it's a few moves and he's getting stuff. This is just a move, and then I live. So it's not, it's, it, hassling doesn't really apply. Life and death applies. How do I um, know I'm going to live? Well, actually, I made a couple extremely brief assumptions. For instance, if he plays B, it doesn't work. Now, I didn't even read it out. It's like the character of it, I just assumed it wouldn't work. So let's double check. He plays here. He cuts in Gote, so I was right. That didn't work. And if he gets out, I'm out. So he can't surround me completely. So then it's like, am I alive? Sure, that's a lie, right? And again, that's an assumption. I see that shape in my head and I go, ah, that looks like life. 
It very much looks like life to me. So that's that part. If black would have played f3, black did play f3. Ah, let's go look at that. Black plays here. Would I respond? Mm, yeah. Yeah, because now, yeah, this is different. Running is much more difficult now. Living is more difficult. And he got a big wall in Sente. Yeah, for that I would get out and I'll just play it out. It's a standard sequence. This is the Giuseppe associated with that um, in this pattern. Okay. So, yeah, black. And then I'm considering third or fourth line. And his wall will not do much in the center. His group, I don't plan on attacking it because I'm my A group is weak, so I'm not going to be attacking him. My left side has no needs. It's defended. So there's nothing going on in the center. We have no... If my left side was weak, I'd play fourth line to keep an eye on it. If his group was weak, I'd play fourth line to get ready to attack. If I could develop, anything like that. But there's nothing going on. Everything's pretty much straightforward now. So third line. So for black, black looks healthy enough. You can think of getting a little profit by hurting my bottom left area. And the next big move, which is probably the bottom. So big moves and maybe hassle white a little bit. Why low? I just talked about low. Uh, why not back up to E? Ah, backing up E12, no problem. Uh, backing up something suggests like, uh, oh, my buddy's weak. I'll go back him up, give him help. But my group on the left spent a whole move for defense, so it doesn't have any needs. Perhaps if my left was uh, suggesting uh, a big moyo, then fourth line to back up that idea. But here, there's no uh, moyo idea, no weakness to back up. So that group has no needs for its um, health or future. Easily forgiven. <clears throat> okay. My mind goes crazy with that move. There's four approaches to my 4-4 four, four stone. D's the only one that's considered a mistake most of the time. It is considered an approach and any of the four we generally respond to unless there's something urgent. There's nothing urgent, so I'm planning on responding. But let's talk about why this is one of the four that isn't played. If here, and I kick. My corner's not real but I gave him thickness to work with. So what white got is questionable, but black got is more substantial. It's not cash, but it's it has a future to the outside. My stones more said corner, but I didn't get it. So this is not just second. Um, if he plays here, I got the whole corner. Yeah, but in Gote, and his stone is light and hard to attack, so he can go doing what he wants now. Right? He can play, you know, this and make my corner small or something and do whatever he wants. So that's not necessarily bad. But this move, I get the corner and he's weak. It's not a light stone. That's a heavy stone. So he's saying... <clears throat> 
I don't mind this exchange. Well, let's do a little tiny Tawari here. This is actually not Tawari. Here's the sh same shape, but one to the right. This is Giuseppe. White gets a little more than black, but black said, I don't mind taking a little bit of a loss in order to settle on the bottom, which is assumedly a white area. But when we switch that up here, my corner's quite a bit larger, but black's is the same. Ah, too much for white. Okay. So I get to the end here. Oh, well, that is it. So I went here there. So my first thought, of course, is here, but now I have to consider. Did he have something up the sleeve? For instance, this, if this is Sente, let's pretend it's Sente and I have to live. We'll just pretend. And he comes up. See how he's developing something? And I feel like I have to respond. So my question is, is he developing too much? That's the question I have to ask myself. Like, well, not really. Um, because I've got, uh, you know, it's hard for him. This is it's just it's hard to take. Even if he gets everything, it's just too hard. So I think I can um, take the time to play this move. So right away in my head, I'm thinking, if I can attack both of these groups, that brings his bottom left black group back into question. All of a sudden, I kind of like this move. Helps me. Now, I haven't wanted to help me. It hasn't been worth my time. But all of a sudden, I can help me as I bother one of his groups and start getting back to the other one. This, this move, which I wanted to play, is finally becoming meaningful to me. And I got the bottom right corner. So again, I feel like I've, in this last sequence, picked up another bit of territory, another bit of a lead. So a little bit of a lead plus a little more should give me close to a stone about a stone ahead. So I'm going to count real quick and see. Ah, uh, no, still a game. That's uh, 30 moves and perhaps less than a stone of a game. That's regular. Mm, so I'll put my two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, 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 six, eight, eight, two, four, six, eight, eight, almost forty with Comey, let's say forty five. <laughs> yeah. And black has gosh, let's go with two, four, six, eight, ten, eighteen, we'll go with twenty, twenty, two, three, four, twenty. Yeah, a little more. Yeah, maybe a whole stone. Maybe maybe a little more than a stone. Hard to know how black to, if black can use his wall well, but maybe more than a stone. Possibly a stone and a half, but definitely gaining. This is the uh, first time we've done we've done things similar to this, but not quite this. So again, I'd like some feedback throughout the week if you guys want to send it my emails and in in my info. On if this was, um, you know, if this was good, do we prefer this kind of thing, the reviews, the tape terms, just some feedback would be good. So if I'm black, I'm thinking I don't have time to play any big move. I want to be uh, making some defense here. Can we consider K5 uh, linking? Mm, I'm not sure the definition of link. If you mean so that they're now one group, not cuttable? No, you're going to be cuttable, period. Can you do it linking them so that they are helping each other? Yes, it would be good if they could help each other. Versus our 
right. R12 is a big move, and you're looking for um, a defensive move. And you might decide there's a term for um, the strategy of living small. Um, anyone know that? Um, I can't remember it, but you, Amashi, I think that's correct. Uh, living small. You could say, you know, I don't think he can do much against both my groups. They're both sturdy enough. I'll go take a big move. There's a strategy based on that kind of risk. Um, and I'm not ready to say that's unreasonable because your B group does have that extra stone of defense and the A group has room to run. So that's possible. It's not my style. I like defending. I, I find defense to be very large. Um, but there you go with your different ideas. You suggested J5, and I think that's a reasonable idea. Also, something like G3. White's weak there. So we already know White's going to live. You could force White to live and get a connection across the top. variations. G2 is also interesting. G2, G3, both very powerful moves. Um, this is a valid... Uh, let's talk about G3. Let's start with what's going on. C group can't call it strong. Its its job is I want to live. That's pretty much its job. And if I can split and hurt the two black groups, that'd be great. The problem, of course, is white's very thin right here on the three line. So black thinking I've got two weak groups. White's only got one. If I can use his thin area, his triangles to help my stones, that would be great. So he's okay. And white says, well, I don't want to be cut apart. And black says, if you don't do anything, I'm going to Atari and Atari and you're cut in two. So because of white's thin, this H4 becomes scented. So white says, for instance, I'll fix. Uh, that's a pretty basic idea. There's so many variations, we're just touching on the basics. Black says, great, I got to connect. I says, but I'll Atari you. Black says, I'll just connect. And he connected across the top because of white's weak weakness. That's one, that's the sort of picture Black's trying to create here with this idea. And this is common. Put white's weakness to fix yourself. G2 is the opposite. G2 says, I don't want to connect. I'm ripping White's eyes apart. Whoops. Now I, I got all the points. And I took them away from White. I got one group strong. Now we both have one weak group. And Black saying, I'm happy with that. Instead of having two weak groups, I only have one, and he's got a weak one, too, and I picked up the plus. So very different idea, but both of them are using White's weakness. Wow, we've been here 45 minutes. That's amazing.
Okay. I didn't like that outcome. What else can I do? Since I that really had a good feeling for black. So uh, I start looking at alternatives. And the only alternative I can think of is simply coming out. So we did the one readout. Let's do the other one. He comes out. He doesn't want me to turn. Couple cuts. He takes care of this one. Now, when he comes down, that's two cuts, right? Like he's either going to capture or cut me. That's that's pretty big, right? That's that's big. He's getting everything. I'm getting nothing. So. From here, he plays here, I fix here, he comes out, how do I feel about this kind of thing? If I can get this, this could be worthwhile. There's a lot of, lot of different things could go on here, but this is the sort of thing I would expect if I came out. So I want to compare that and that, oh, not that one. So where are we in this game? We are here. Point, black, point, black, point, black comes up, I jump. I'm going to go the straightforward way. The other one seems risky. I'm going this way. I'm going to jump out now. I don't see a reason I can't do a two-point jump. So now for a while, we'll be dealing with him running, him getting healthy, and me getting healthy. Looks like it'll be easier for me to get healthy. But he got quite a little profit on the bottom. Great health, good points. And remember, those points are times two. So he gained approximately six points and removed at least four. So that's ten points. So he's going to think about running or going under like B8, C8, the underneath moves. Notice how black is, we could say he's in bad shape. That is, behind enemy lines, heavy shape. The more we get to emergency measures, the more we like contact moves. So C8 really become, C8 or E8 are becoming the kind of moves we're looking for. Because black, G5, uh, no, it shouldn't work. He goes to get out. I say... What we're doing is looking like thinking, so I really want this move. His tiger's mouth here is great shape for him, and he starts getting the points. If I take it, he gets a flat shape, and I get the points. The points here is huge difference, big difference. But me get thickness, all of a sudden, I get trouble. So I feel that I'm too weak to be giving him this thickness. So instead, I'm going to pull back and not give him that thickness. Uh, Engelo, you were um, thinking of G5, uh, and I said it doesn't work, but we happen to find work. Can he? through this cutting idea, surround me. No, uh, I will be out, 
period. Can he cut off the G6 stone? Well, white's going to be out. Can he cut off that stone? Maybe. But even if he does, I'm out. Does he want to capture a stone here? Hmm. Perhaps it's getting more interesting. Ooh, he ignores. That's amazing. I will take the big move in Sente. And now I don't care about my thickness because it's my move. I can defend my thickness. And now, which one, what shall we do? Let's do this one. This fixes all my problems, so he can't use them against me. Gets rid of his eye. Now I can play d6 in Sente, which really hurts more and more. He's down to no eyes and running. So he got a big move, but I got the, I got the urgent one. No longer is he weak and I'm weak. Now only he is weak. That's a big difference. Also, let's say that R12 is a big move. I don't think it's quite as big as he's thinking it is, but still, let's say it's a big move. What was the cost? It's expensive. A whole move. Whole moves are very expensive. He spent one whole move to get that big move. I did F5, which isn't as big, but I got it for free. And my next move will be free. And then the next one will be free. And then the next one will be free. I wouldn't do this if I felt it hurt me at all, but I don't see any pain involved. So I'm going to do this. Should I cut? That's what I'm reading. He, he played a nice move. I can cut him. I'm too weak to cut. What about the other cut? Still too weak. Okay, I can't cut, so I'll peek. Let me show that. My bottom left group has become the weak one. And his group has become the strong one. And of course, if I spend time trying to make my first idea good, oh gosh, I'm just falling apart here. I could die. It's really getting bad. So I'm just too weak. This is a fighting move, and I'm not strong enough to fight. We only have five minutes, so let's take this time to go back and look at a couple other things that happened and do a bit of a review. Uh, Flynn Wan, thank you so much. C5 is, uh, yeah, too small at this point. Okay. We looked at all this. This is an interesting move. Um, if I'm black, this is a uh, this is an unorthodox move, but very interesting. Presents fascinating puzzles. You know, we both get to see. Like my first school teacher said, uh, make it new so we can see our strength. So on Black's fourth play, we're in a position I've never seen before. A lot of things can happen, and now we get to see all that. So I, I like this idea, but I think in the future, maybe you should refrain from showing potentially good sequences. Otherwise, it might just turn it um, true. Yeah. But what, I, I definitely want to give him good information, because if I just play a 12 cue, the game just goes one way and it gets disinterested. Uh, this is hard to know what white should do here, or what black should do instead. Um, 
what would be a straightforward idea here? I think perhaps this. Let's just look at this as a straightforward idea. This is nice for black. Black's developing things well, and white's feeling a burden to um, negate them. So something like this might be a little more straightforward. But his movement, again, is quite interesting and hard to call it a problem. Not Jaseki. Oh, good, uh, Rod Bell. I'm glad uh, for that feedback. Now, we mentioned this was not Jaseki because at this point, Black has no move to feel settled. Let's, um, if I'm Black, I'm going to play this way. Now all the black stones are being used very nicely. Uh, the concern about playing stronger players is it becomes a high level game and you know 98% of everyone in the room it's like much more basic. Um, the higher stuff, you know, also we're doing a lot of reading, a lot of deeper stuff, and deeper Jusekis, and it's like over everyone's head. Okay, so black went this way, not Jusecki. Coming out? Seems fine. I think I probably would come out this way, um, put a little more pressure on the white group, but I think it's a subtle difference. I think if I'm black, I'm going to play it this way. Settle immediately. White will still come up and settle. That's a settled group with points. White's weak, white defends, white gets onto the big area. Seems a little more straightforward. But not. Um, Yeah, again, if we Tawari here, K16, I don't think we play K16 next. <clears throat> um, I, what I did and what I still do, which is like what I would strongly encourage you guys to do, you know, download this, go over it, and see if you can replay the thinking. Why do I play this move? And you go through it and you go, oh, he was thinking this and that and that. What could I change in my game to see from that perspective? Because to me, it's all about perspective. Hey, hon. I'm oh. just a couple minutes. I'll be done. Okay. I got you something. Oh, that's very nice. Oh, good. I have a chocolate. <laughs> oh, she's a good one. <laughs> I got it for everybody. Oh, this, she says I, I, need to, I need to share it. It's Godiva chocolate pearls. Milk chocolate pearls. I've never seen that before. Very cool. Okay. Uh, again, white is so happy to be living on a large scale in Sente. That's huge. That's, I'd say most of the game just went right there. We were like at a stone, stone and a half game. I'd say this is almost a stone by itself. Like it's a big wall in Gote that can't be used well as long as I pay attention. If I didn't pay attention, all of a sudden, oh, that's different. Oh, that's a big difference right there. That's huge. Uh, black could consider omitting J17. Mm. Let's check that out. Um, here. Yeah, let's say in that incentive, let's start there. And let's have black um, just omit that. And then what, Uber? I like it already. Black's already doing well. Not E12. Split. Uh, 
what uh, here. Oh, really better for black, yeah. Still, black does have the wall that's negated, but better, yeah. Thank you, Uber, for catching all that. And from there we go here, to there, to there. We did that, we did that. This was interesting, we talked about that. We talked about all that. Yeah, yeah, E twelve is really makes makes the game for life. Uh, this is getting out. I would go side first, I believe. <clears throat> Let's look at the two two ways. If white submits, white needs another move to feel comfortable here. Probably this one. Black lives in Sente. Huh? Yeah, I like that for black. Uh, white doesn't submit. Now white needs to kill it. How does white kill it? Here. That's getting dangerous. Mm, yeah, hard for white. A lot, lot of difficulties. So I prefer this one. But they both they're both uh, reasonable, I think. <clears throat> and remember why I didn't play D seven, that was important. Um, this is not a good relationship with the corner. Um, it can easily be disrupted. And it's like Black saying, I'm going to invade you. I'm going to invade you. You can already invade. So that's why I would play here. White's corner, 3-3 uh, three, three is still open. Even if White kicks, the 3-3 three, is a bother. Um, so I'd prefer to go this way. I get this Sente and start attacking. Get out with the knight's move. I wouldn't. I would just get out uh, without the knight's move. Because that continues to put pressure on white. For instance, threaten a cut. Does it threaten a cut? Yeah. And all of a sudden white's surrounded. And there's much more to do here. Alrighty, we'll call it quits there. Thanks everybody for coming. As always, I hope we had a good time and hopefully learned something. Uh, this takes us down to one lesson in the fund. Feel free to donate if you want us to continue. And hopefully you'll give me some feedback as to this idea versus others and all like that. Okay guys, bye.